In this video, I'm going to test and compare my crazy homemade FPV antenna. It's a 34-turn, 5.8 GHz helical antenna made with thick copper wire, a 15 mm ABS square tube, the lid of a pickle jar, the remnant of an FPV antenna, and a foam board as the supports. I've managed to build one of these by Giant Ant Cowboy's instruction video on how you could build helical antennas yourself. And if you want to find that video, I'll put it in the description for you to check it out. So I'm not that well known about helical antennas and antennas in general, but I know the more turns you have on your helical, the more range you could get to some extent. I've searched through the internet and found a couple of videos of FPV pilots with their own homemade helical antenna having a huge success in their long range FPV flights. First, I started out with an 11 turn helical and got over four kilometers at 600 milliwatts of power with perfect video with also the turns in return to home and everything else. This was huge for me because I've never ever gotten these results before at 600 milliwatts, even with my previous antenna, the 150 millimeters triple feed patch array. This is because the area that I live in radiates a lot of interference and FPV flights were always not enjoyable anymore after five to six kilometers out with more than 800 milliwatts of power because the video link broke up every time or flashed in black and white. So after that success with the 11 turn helical, I built myself the 34 turn helical just to see what happens, but with the hope to one day finally fly over 10 kilometers under FPV with a solid video signal at 5.8 gigahertz. So because I have no 3D printer, I had to spool the wires up by hand, but the whole antenna was done within one and a half hours with most of the time perfecting the turns between each coil. So I prepared my long range FPV observer to fly this four kilometer waypoint mission a couple of times so that I could go switch between channels on my goggles to tell the difference between each antenna. And I cannot use the DVR because the files are corrupted somehow. So you see me record the inside of the goggles with my phone. So the flight plan for today is to have this plane four kilometers out that way with the INAV waypoint mission. So the transmitter will be completely turned off so while this plane is flying its waypoint mission i'll have this phone record the inside of the uh e-sheen goggle and i'm gonna have it on the receiver b on which the triple feed patch antenna will show its performance and when the performance is just completely gone i'll switch to the receiver a and that is with this 34 turn helical antenna right here So the triple feed patch is on there and as you can see it is good for 1.3 kilometers so far and this is at 200 milliwatts of power it's at 3.35 kilometers so far you know the video is still great video is still there um rssi is still there as well that's surprising because the transmitter is on ground and the distance is just crazy. I've never gotten so far with the X8R receiver and the RSSI is just at the 50s. So that's quite impressive. It's almost yeah. at four kilometers out and then it will go back. But now for a comparison, I'll change it to the, um, as you can see, the performance is still there. It's turning around now. It's going back for its third waypoint. This is with the helical antenna here. And if I aim it correctly, the video is, it's also as fuzzy. Oh, okay. The plane is, oh wait, here it is. This is clear video, almost clear video. Um, yeah, this is the best I can get. At 200 milliwatts of power, three and a half kilometers. You know what, I'm, I'm just gonna do 25 milliwatts and repeat the uh, waypoint mission with different batteries. Can you guys see the plane? Well, I can. It's way out there. And the strobe lights are so visible. Not anymore because this stupid camera doesn't want to focus right now. Okay. 
there right now you could see it at 800 meters away almost and as you can see the triple feed patch is doing great right now so right now it's at 1.63 kilometers away and if this camera want to focus you could see the plane just blinking out far in the distance way over there um, the video starts to fuzz up right now um, well not anymore because now I got it fixed at where it's flying now and the video isn't great anymore as it was uh, 800 meters uh, back it's at two kilometers almost still doing great the RSSI is up there too it's at 70 kilometers away and the video gets worse and worse right now um, so I think when it's at three kilometers, I'm gonna switch to the 34 turn helical while you cannot, you could barely see it right here because it's basically nighttime now. Um, so it's at 278, 280. So this is the video, the best video that I could get with the triple feed. So right now I'm gonna switch it to the, uh, to the uh, 34 turn helical. Okay. So this is the best video that I could get right now. Oh, there it is. That is much better. 3.93, 3.94, it's almost at four kilometers. And then it will head back to home. So this is four kilometers under waypoint mission flying, testing the triple feed patch and the 34 turn helical. Um, it's coming back now. And even under the turn, uh, the video is out there. Um, uh oh. Battery is flashing, so that is not a great thing to see at four kilometers out. I hope it decreases, otherwise, I have to uh, take control manually. So the plane is there, okay? So this is with the 34 turn helical. So I'm going to switch it to channel B and see what it does there or how the video is. Yeah, so the video is not that good at all. And I'm aiming it at the plane and even <laughs> even at three kilometers. OK, wait, so I'm going to try and focus this camera because I could see it. I could clearly see the lights flashing in the distance. Can you see that blinking light over there? That is my plane at 2.81 kilometers away. So let me just talk about the amount of luck I had as a pilot and the miracle that this plane is still in one piece because the plane was just coming home normally, but at like 1.3 kilometers remaining, I saw it going into a different direction. And I got cautious of that thanks to the lights that can still be clearly seen over that distance away because the lights were oriented differently from my perspective. So I found that a bit strange. So I cut the recording and put on my goggles. And the moment I put on my goggles, I just noticed the plane doing these wild S turns while the battery indicators were just flashing. Uh, and I saw that the individual cell voltage was at 3.1 volts. And I panicked, not because of the battery voltage, but because I knew that the uh, ESC in here was programmed to prevent the batteries to drain below 3.1 volts. Normally, this plane needs 8 to 10 amps to maintain stable in flight while maintaining the altitude. So this plane was just only doing it with 3 to 5 amps. So I immediately disengaged the waypoint mission. And I just took one heck of a dive from 100 meters high, a kilometer away, to regain airspeed and this was all with the motor off and I tried to line up with this bike lane here that acts as my runway and luckily there was nobody just passing by no runners no scooters at all but the problem was I saw nothing on my goggles it was pitch black so I wasn't sure if I was lined up with the uh, bike lane here or with the uh, water here and so so at the last moment I heard the plane coming in so I took off my goggles but the problem was these lights were blinking in unison so I saw like the whole orientation of the plane and then nothing the whole orientation of the plane and then nothing so so I came in I lined up with the uh, uh, bike lane here but the problem was uh, I was very close to the tree like I was actually flying behind the tree so I panicked because I knew I was very close to the tree uh, I was not past it so that meant that I was very close so I took one heck of a turn away from the tree and then back to the uh, bike lane here and luckily um, I was just in time to get it lined up 
and then at one moment I saw it so close to the ground that I just put on full up elevator and then I just heard it just grind the ground ever so softly so I was very happy with that landing because the chance of that going very well was so minimal like I could have crashed into the tree or in the water or got disorientated and just landed somewhere else like like in this rough grass or anywhere else but this uh, soft ground here that acts as my runway so I'm very happy with this miracle the plane is still in one piece I could still fly with it no damage at all um, I think I've gathered enough information or uh, uh, data on the antennas and so furthermore I want to thank you guys so much for watching for supporting my content my videos um, you know Merry Christmas Happy New Year fly FPV um, take care and Bye. Oh boy, it's time to head home.